Greetings and salutations. It is I, Mr. Nothing, the museum curator of the weird and the strange and the host who hates Christmas. Grr. Uh, welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about unusual and out of the ordinary literature. Uh, we are still in the holiday months, so I wanted to talk about another Christmas story. Uh, wh one that is aimed at children. I've talked about uh, children's short stories before. Um, uh, also, yeah, it's, it's Short Story Tuesday, so let's, let's talk about some short stories. But I've talked about some so children's short stories before, including Jumanji and uh, Where the Wild Things Are. Uh, some pretty good short stories. Uh, and I wanted to focus on another one. Uh, so today, I will be talking about... Uh, Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas, a fascinating and uh, timeless uh, children's story uh, worth talking about. For those who don't know, and it's hard to find people who don't know about Dr. Seuss, uh, that was his pen name. His real name was Theodore Gazelle, Gizzle, something like that. Uh, he was uh, most more frequently known as a a children's author and illustrator uh, writing How the Grinch Stole Christmas, but also um, Hop on Pop, uh, One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish, The Cat in the Hat, The Cat in the Hat Comes Back, uh, Green Eggs and Ham, uh, among countless other stories. Um, he's known as, you know, one of the, the big children's um, authors. Uh, his stories have, have persisted through time and there have been a number of adaptations to his work. Uh, during World War II he served as a, um, a sort of um, a political cartoonist, a propagandist essentially, uh, and he, uh, like, one of the things he advocated for was the internment of Japanese Americans. So, you know, not, not the greatest record for uh, Theodore Gazelle, uh, but after the war, uh, he did he did um, acknowledge that he was wrong in advocating for that, and um, he eventually wrote about it in Horton Hears a Who, which is apparently a metaphor for the the Japanese the treatment of ja the Japanese during uh, World War II Japanese Americans at least, and uh, that that um, yeah so that's um, how he kind of apologized. I never really got that vibe from Horton Hears a Who, but you know it, it's probably there. And I'm I'm not uh, I'm just too dense to to really synthesize that kind of message. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's talk about uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, a great children's book, and a um, uh, it's been made into a couple movies. Uh, I'm actually a fan of the 2000s Jim Carrey version. Uh, are you a fan? You know, let me know in the comments. We can we can talk about um, how how good or bad that movie is. But first, let's talk about the book. Uh, I'll do a summary, a little analysis, and we will move on from there. So How the Grinch Stole Christmas uh, starts with a narrator talking about Whoville. The citizens of Whoville love their Christmas, they love getting presents, and they love celebrating uh, this, this festive holiday. However, uh, one person in, in, in the mountains of uh, Whoville, uh, a, a very creatureous, like, uh, a creature of some sort uh, does not like Christmas, and that is the Grinch. Uh, he despises the Whoville people, uh, he hates their celebrations, and he realizes that um, um, the, that in, in the coming days with Christmas arriving, there's going to be a lot of Whoville people celebrating, their, getting new presents, new toys, uh, eating some delicious uh, ro uh, roast beast, and, uh, you know, just uh, singing aloud to themselves. And the Grinch doesn't like this at all, so he hatches a plan to steal Christmas. Uh, he, uh, his plan is to go inside each house and take take all the Christmas decorations and the presents and leave the Whoville people with nothing, effectively ruining their Christmas. Uh, and he um, he dresses up as Santa and gets on a sleigh and goes through all of Whoville, 
um, on Christmas Eve night, um, stealing the presents and uh, uh, fooling little children into believing that he is Santa Claus. Uh, he doesn't even uh, leave crumbs enough that are small enough for, or no, he leaves crumbs that are even too small for a mouse, uh, taking everything and then bringing it up uh, back to his home uh, and waiting for the, uh, the people of Whoville to feel despair and sadness, uh, which makes him, you know, a bit of a monster in that way. However, uh, when the people of Whoville awake, they start singing uh, and they're gathered around together having a, a, a fun time, even though their presence and, and everything has been taken from them. They were robbed in the middle of the night. Uh, and the Grinch realizes that um, it, perhaps Christmas isn't about receiving presents or eating fancy foods or uh, having a wild time with, with Christmas decorations. Uh, the true meaning of Christmas uh, is, is the company you share and the people, uh, and there's, there's a deeper meaning with, with love and everything there. And it causes the Grinch's heart to grow two or three sizes, and he, he returns the presents to the Whovillians, and uh, they allow him to carve the roast beef and participate in their holiday. So it ends on a very hopeful note. Uh, right there. In terms of analysis, there's a couple things I want to talk about. This is a, again, this is a children's story, so you know, not not to go too in depth here. Uh, but again, uh, th this story really highlights the reason for the season. I talked about this last week with Gift of the Magi, how uh, the the couple in the story um, didn't mind that they couldn't use their their fancy gifts. Uh, what what mattered most was that they were in the presence of, of someone who loved them and who they loved and so uh, they were able to enjoy each other's company and that was um, enough for, for Christmas. And uh, in this story Dr. Seuss um, gets at that uh, because at first it seems to the Grinch that uh, the people of Whoville are really into the presence and that's all that Christmas is about. It's about making loud noises and, and disrupting the Grinch's uh, time to uh, stew in his own madness and anger <laughs> and uh, uh, so uh, when this when the Grinch steals the presents he thinks he's stealing Christmas from them uh, but um, once the Whoville people wake up, they start singing, and the Grinch realizes, and perhaps many of the people in in Whoville realize that it's not uh, the presents or the uh, the wild events that make for uh, Christmas. Rather, it's um, it's the pe being surrounded by people you love uh, and celebrating life and and whatnot. Uh, which I, I feel is a great message to send to children. You know, uh, there uh, people often highlight how Christmas is all about getting presents, but here is Dr. Seuss saying uh, it's it's also about the company of the people that you love, uh, and that that's also a gift. So uh, you know, um, uh, the big thing that shows up in uh, uh, and in both the story and also in the gift of the magi. Another interesting aspect of the story is the end. Um, uh, the despite the fact that uh, the Grinch tried to rob them all blind uh, and, and snuck into their house an invasion of privacy. Uh, you know, uh, at the very end, they invite him to eat uh, eat food with them and celebrate their Christmas time. Perhaps he was always included, but he just refused to participate. Uh, but uh, that's a, I feel like that's a good message to send children. Like maybe don't tell them to invite the mass murderers to your to your Christmas functions, but make sure they know not to exclude everyone during this holiday. That this is a time for for togetherness and that uh, um, being solitary on Christmas is, isn't a lot of fun. And so make sure you can include everybody you can uh, and um, that that would be a fun time. So, you know, somewhat of a good message to send, send to children. And then the last thing I want to talk about is the art, uh, the illustrations in uh, this story. Uh, it's very Seussical. It follows the, the typical, you know, Seuss pattern of drawing zany creatures and and odd contraptions that, uh, that stand out um, uh, from other illustrations. Uh, something really interesting is there's not a lot of color to this story. The only color you really see is red in some of the toys and in the, the Santa costume that uh, the Grinch is wearing. Uh, the Grinch doesn't even have color himself. I know that uh, a lot of the adaptations make him green, uh, but the 
um, but the uh, illustration of the Grinch here, uh, he's colorless. And maybe that's uh, saying something about how uh, refusing to celebrate Christmas makes you joyless and effectively colorless. Uh, but um, I, I think I'm, I'm kind of leaping to that kind of conclusion. There is, uh, there's not a whole lot of color at all in this story um, besides the red on, on the Christmas suit and whatnot. So yeah, uh, quality art helps it stand out and helps make this story a, a classic uh, and, and, and worth, uh, worth reading. Ultimately, I, I like the story. I liked it when I was younger and I still like it today. It's, it's fun to read and it, it makes me want to uh, makes me want to watch the the Grinch Christmas movies. I recommend it to you out there. I recommend it to your children uh, because, you know, it's it's always a fun story to read at Christmas time. Uh, a fun story to read outside of Christmas time. You know, it's it's Dr. Seuss. It holds up and it's it's um, it's uh, pretty solid. So, you know, go go read it if you can and read it to your children um, or tell your children to read it. Um, demand that they read it during Christmas time. Um, other, yeah, so if you have anything to say about this book um, or my review, you know, make sure to comment below. I would love to talk to you about this book and have a good conversation about uh, the Grinch and the people of Whoville and the kind of messages that this book has. Um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that we can, we can get this book out to the masses and uh, more people can find out about Short Story Tuesday. And until then, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and Christmas-hating travels. Farewell.